Hello, hello. My name is Ahmed Azigit. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Nicosia. Can I quickly confirm your full name and date of birth, please? Andreas Nabolao, born the 15th February 1984. And how would you like to be addressed? Andreas is fine. Very nice to meet you, Andreas. Today, my supervisor has asked me to perform an upper limb neurological examination, which involves having a look, having a feel around your arms, and getting you to do some movements and checking your reflexes. And based on the nature of this examination, I will need access and exposure of, of your arms up to your shoulders. How does that sound? Fine. Because I'm a medical student, I am being supervised, and my supervisor might have to repeat this examination after me. Having said that, you do have the right to withdraw consent at any time, and this will not affect your care at this facility. Are you happy with all of this information? Yeah. Very well. Are you in any pain at the moment? No. Okay. Would you like a shot from doing this? No, it's fine. So shall we get started? Of course. Thank you very much. First, we start with inspection. Upon inspection of the patient, the patient appears to be well. They're not in distress. Upon checking the surroundings, I do not see any medication, any writing aids, any walking frames, or any other walking aids that might suggest an ongoing problem. Upon closer inspection of the patient's arms, I do not see any muscle wasting, I do not see any scars, there are no involuntary movements or fasciculations, and I do not see any tremors. Okay, and based on how the patient is sitting without the use of their hands to stabilize their trunk, there is no evidence of trunkal ataxia. Can I get you to uh, stand up for me without the use of your hands? Stance instability is also present. Very well. Since you're standing up, I would like to ask you to close your eyes for me and hold out your hands like this, okay? And I would ideally wait for 30 seconds, and if there is no drifting down, I would say that there is no pronator drift. And if you can flip them over for me, very well. Now I will go ahead and press them down gently and try to remain in the same position, okay? And there is no evidence of cerebellar rebound. Okay, you can close, you can open your eyes now. Very well. Next, I would like to see how you walk. Could you walk towards the door for me? Symmetrical, well-coordinated gait, no evidence of Parkinsonian turn. Very well, no uh, high stepping, no shuffling, no uh, scissoring or battling gait. Can you please walk on your tiptoes for me? Now, as you do this, please walk with the patient and make sure that they don't fall. Next, can you please walk on your heels for me? Very well. And one last time, could you please walk heel to toe for me, like this? Very well. Again, symmetrical, well-coordinated gait. If you can lay down for me, please. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assess the tone of your arms, okay? For this, I will do like a handshake with both arms and compare their tone symmetrically, okay? Do some flexion and extension movements and internal and external rotation movements. Okay, there appears to be no hypo or hypertonia, and apparently there is no flaccidity or rigidity such as lead pipe, clasp knife, or cogwheel rigidities. So this takes care of our tone assessment. Next, I'll be checking the power of your upper limbs, okay? If you can first do this for me, and don't let me push it down, okay? Starting with the right shoulder, stabilize the shoulder, and test the power at the level of shoulder. Very well, symmetrically intact power. There appears to be no loss of power. I would say six out of six. Next, we'll be testing your elbow power, okay? So if you can do this for me, and I will stabilize the joint and try to push it in, try to push it out. Very well. Again, do the same. Try to push it in, try to push it out. Very well. Symmetrical power, no loss of power bilaterally. Now next, if you can do this and cock your wrists back and I will stabilize the joint and resist my movement. Again, resist my movement. 
symmetrical power on both sides. Next, if you can outstretch your hands like this, and please resist my movement. And again, resist my movement. Very well, if you can separate your fingers and resist my movement. Very well, and resist my movement. Excellent. If you can grab my hand and don't let it go. Very well. Again, don't let it go. Excellent. Now, if you can do this and place your thumb up and please resist my movement. Please resist my movement. Very well. So, upon testing of all the joints on the upper arms, I do, uh, both sides appear to be symmetrical in power. There appears to be no loss of power. Next, we'll move on to coordination, okay? There are two tests that we're going to do in coordination, nose to finger test and mysteriodococinesia. Let's start with the one that we can actually say first, right? The, I will ask you to touch your nose and then touch my finger, okay? I will keep changing the location of my finger, but try to remain within the patient's reach. There appears to be very well coordination in the right hand. Now let's do it with the other one. There appears to be no loss of coordination, so coordination is intact bilaterally. Next, we'll do this deal, the cochinesia test, so which involves placing one hand in the palm of the other and flipping it back and forth very quickly as, far, as, as much as you can. Very well. Now flip the hands. Very well. There appears to be no loss of coordination. Next, we'll move on to sensation. I will start checking the sensation on your arms with a cotton wool, okay? This is what a cotton wool should feel like. Testing it on the patient's sternum. Do you feel it? Yeah. Does it feel like a cotton wool? Yeah. Very well. So I'll start at the dermatome C4. Let me know if you feel it and if it feels the same on both sides. You can close your eyes if you like. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Does it feel the same? Yeah. So that's C4. Yeah. Yeah. C5. Yeah. Yeah. C6. Yeah. Yeah. C7. Yeah. Yeah. C8. Does it feel the same on both sides? Yeah. Very well. At this point, I would also go ahead and check the pain sensation with a neurotip, but we're not required to do this at this level. Next, I'll be checking your vibration sensation. I'll be doing this with the lower frequency tuning fork because lower frequencies are better felt than heard. Okay? Now, if you can close your eyes, and let me know if you feel this. Yeah. Okay, you feel the vibration, okay? Very well. Now, I will touch it on your thumbs on both sides. And please let me know if you feel it. When the feeling stops, you'll be closing your eyes. And if the feeling is symmetrical on both sides, okay? Close your eyes for me. Yes. Stop. Very well. Yeah. Stop. Is the vibration, is the vibration felt symmetrically on both sides? Okay. Very well. If the vibration is intact distally, you do not need to check the proximal dermatomes because it will be intact proximally as well. Final part of our sensation is proprioception, which is the sense of direction. Now, if you can, well, first I will show you how we're going to do this. I will be putting your thumb down and upwards, okay? This is up, this is down. If you can close your eyes and let me know which direction. Down, up, up. Very well. Now I will be doing it with the other hand. Let me know which direction. Down, down, up. Excellent. Proprioception is intact bilaterally on both sides. Very well. Next, we'll be checking your reflexes, okay? We'll be starting with the biceps reflex, then we'll move on to the brachioradialis, and then the triceps reflex. And I will be doing so with my tendon hammer, okay? It looks scary, but it's not too bad. Just relax, let your hands go very floppy, okay? 
as the patient's hands are resting on their on their legs, very floppy. Identify the tendon, tap once. Again, on the other side, you can switch your hands if that makes it easier for you. Identify the tendon and tap once to see that the reflex is present, it's not absent, and it's not exaggerated. Next, we'll tap on the brachioradialis. If you're starting new, you might want to keep your thumb there as a buffer so that you don't hurt the patient. Very well. Reflexes are intact bilaterally and they're not absent, they're not exaggerated. Now is the triceps reflex. So if you can just let your hand go very floppy and rest it on my hand and identify the triceps tendon and tap once. Tap once. Reflexes are present bilaterally. There's no loss of reflex. Very well. So this concludes our examination. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and report my findings to my supervisor and we'll get back to you with our feedback. And in the meantime, what else I would do? I would also perform a lower limb neurological examination and a peripheral vascular examination. Thank you very much for your time.